Hey, it's Swim and Bob. Uh, welcome to Paco's Projects, coming at you from Vault 34. 34 on there. We'll be changing this out eventually. It's going to be uh, Vault Zero. If you've played any of the uh, the older Fallout games, you'll know Vault Zero is in Colorado and home state. So anyway, I'm going to show you today how to build your own Pit Boy from Fallout 4, coming out this November. And the whole thing's made out of craft foam. Except for, of course, the iPhone 4S that I have installed. Depending on the type of phone you're using, you might have to make a few adjustments so it'll fit your phone. I have tutorial that we're going to be jumping into here in a moment. But allow me to jump into the intro and then we'll show you how to make your own Pip-Boy from Fallout 4. Thing you want to do is uh, make a gauntlet. And gauntlets are pretty easy to use. I don't show how to do that here, but all you have to do is just measure your arm length, circumference, and the circumference of the of your wrist, and then cut out a wedge-shaped piece and then glue, glue it all together. And here I had three separate pieces. Because if you notice on the Pip Boy, there's like you know kind of like a terrace type design to it, so that's what I did here, and I just hot glued this all together, kind of worked it into shape so that way it was all nice and rounded. And then I went and uh, glued these pieces in to finish up the pieces, like the spaces that were left. And that's really unnecessary, but it worked out well for this because it gave a, the, some structure to the pip boy So that way I could uh, attach the next piece, which is pretty much the basis of the pip boy This is just like, you know, the armband part. And this is what I was talking about, the basis of the pit boy So I used Mod Podge to glue this on. And you could use whatever kind of glue you have. Uh, hot glue would dry a lot faster than the Mod Podge, but the Mod Podge is pretty strong. And I also used it partly because of the fact that in the heat, it's not going to weaken like the hot glue will and start to come apart. But I won't have any problem with the gauntlet coming apart since everything else is built on top of it. This right here is part of the frame that fits around the phone, and I used, you know, just some straight pins to, to hold this in while it was curing, so that way it wouldn't slide around. These are two different thicknesses of craft foam that I use for this. That way it gives some thickness to the frame, so that way your, your phone will fit into it. And these little pieces of foam were just extra scrap foam from one of those foam mats. And that's to give the Pip Boy some extra strength, and that way I don't have like a lot of empty space behind it that I have to fill in later. And it's all put together with, again, the, the Mod Podge. And I used uh, quite a bit of Mod Podge, but I kind of wanted it that way because that way it holds everything together and. Nothing will come apart once it cures. And the next part, I uh, glued on the frame that the phone will fit into with the Mod Podge. And again, you could, you could use hot glue for this. It, it, they would both work pretty well. Uh, it just takes longer for that Mod Podge to dry. But you have to make sure you get everything centered and everything adjusted right before the glue sets. So it is good to use it. This is part of the frame, and as you can see, I have the cutout already for the the tuner gauge. And then these these parts on there that look like antenna, those are actually just part of the top half of the pit boy. And those will, you know, the length will will differ depending on the thickness and size of your phone. So they could be shorter, they could be longer. I had a like I was saying the the iPhone 4s in there, so I cut those to that size. Same thing with the screen size, that's cut to the size of the iPhone 4S screen. And then there are several, you know, frame pieces that go around the screen. This is one of the last pieces of the frame. And as you can see, the Geiger counter 
parts, I, I had to cut and adjust those several times to get them fitted the way I, I wanted, but eventually I got it, and I glued all that on with the Mod Podge, and I figure using the Mod Podge for this part would be a lot easier than the hot glue, because some of these smaller areas um, are, are difficult to glue with the hot glue without burning yourself. Um, it happened a couple of times uh, later in the video, but it's just uh, much easier to work with, and I had to use two different thicknesses for that. That way it would be measured properly and not look funny once it dried. And again, I use pins to keep everything together so it doesn't, nothing peels apart. And then this is where I add in the Geiger counter window and gauges. And those were just uh, printed off of, from a bubble jet printer image that I had. You know, it worked pretty well. And there's a piece of plastic over the top of that to make it look like glass. I pressed that down into there using the hobby knife. And it worked pretty well. And I could have done this like before in the earlier one, but I figured it worked better doing it like this. And then the next part is the, the radio tuner gauge, and that also has its own little plastic window. Now, if you're wondering what kind of plastic I used for that, that was part of um, a salad, uh, like a you know, salad box uh, from uh, a local grocery store, and they're really easy to find, so you won't have any problems finding that plastic there. And then the uh, more of the Mod Podge again, and this is where I'm gluing on the the frame pieces, the, the video frame pieces to the phone frame housing. But first I had to put on another piece here because my phone was a little bit thicker than I thought it would be and I didn't want to get it stuck in there. But I also didn't want the phone to fall out. Uh, fall out. Fall, yeah. Yeah, puns, yeah, okay. Fall out. <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, I just cleaned off some of the glue there because that part's not supposed to be glued. But the rest of it is. And I had to wait for that to cure, and then uh, as you've noticed, uh, I cut an area out, kind of like a, a beveled edge on, on that, so it looks more like the, the one in the game. The the clip was another one of those thicker anti-fatigue foam mat pieces, uh, and this piece here is just, you know, cardboard tubing with you know, paper towel stuck inside of it, so that way it gives it some strength. And I just hot glue that into place, and that gives the, uh, you know, the foam clip piece, something to, you know, hold on to as I'm gluing it on, and then, you know, this little button piece, you know, and I'll, I'll paint that later so it looks more like the actual button on the, the Pip-Boy, and that just, you know, glues on right in that space right there real nice like that, and it looks, looks pretty good. Used quite a bit of hot glue on that, so that way it would you know, stay on there, and this is part of the little knob pieces that are on the side. This is the side knob, and, you know, it's just, you know, craft foam sandwiched between two water bottle caps. And, water, you know, water bottles, yeah, they, you find those everywhere. And then I just stuck that down inside of another piece of cardboard tubing. And then I cut out a space, as you can see, in the side there. And you'll, you'll see why in a moment. And that part right there, that uh, big knob I stuck in there, that's part of one of those uh, travel clock flashlights. You can find those really easy online for real cheap. So I go on there like that. I had to paint the knob because it had like like names of different uh, time zone locations on it. I didn't want that showing. And once I just painted it and covered it all up, just hot glued it in place. And that way, you know, it looks like the knob on the actual Pip Boy. And then the these are pieces that are going on for the other uh, no dial knob on the side where the those water bottle caps are and you know I, I figured this was the easiest way to do this I actually had a, a piece of uh, model tank tread that I could have used but I was figuring since you probably don't have that you know who's ever watching this video here's how you make one yourself so that goes on the side there and again, it's just a lot of hot glue. That way, it'll it'll stay on there without falling off. And if you notice the tape compartment, I didn't really cut out the area for the tape compartment yet. I'm going to do that later. But I had to fit a bunch of pieces of paper towel into here, so that way it would give it some strength. Because that part was kind of uh, weak. And then, like right next to it, you can see where the tape eject button is, and that's just another piece of that thicker anti-fatigue mat foam.
I'm just clean off some of the glue there. Okay, now this part, you know, I didn't really measure anything for this. I just took squares of craft foam and stuck it to the side, made sure it was going to look nice, and then cut it to the proper size. I did the same thing here, and, you know, these pieces may differ depending on how big your arm is, so you really can't go based on how small I made mine, because I've got smaller arms. Now, the radio tube thing on the back, it's just a bunch of miscellaneous parts. So this is a piece of dowel rod and some craft foam that has, has an extra spacer inside of a one of those uh, diesel battery sleeves, and then, you know, a piece of wire, so that way I can more easily hook it onto the side of the Pip-Boy. Dr. Pepper cap, and then I use another bottle cap for the top piece here. You'll see this after I clean away some of this uh, excess glue, which really doesn't matter because I end up gluing it again anyway. So I figured it was going to work better like that. And then, you know, that will go on the side there. But we're not finished yet because we got to, you know, build up some paper clay on the side there to give it that more curved top that it has. Paper clay is, you know, amazing stuff. It's, it's just uh, air-dry clay. It's really easy to use. It's inexpensive, and you can shape it really easily. So I didn't use much at all. You know, I just built over the top of this cap here, as you can see, and, you know, just smoothed everything out. I could have done a lot more finishing to it than I did, but, you know, I figured it looked good enough as, as it was, and, you know, it's a pit boy, so it's going to be a little, you know, dented and dinged up, so it still looks pretty nice. And then I just paint that all white. And here's the paper clay again because I made some molds for the little knobs on on the on the front and side of the paper pip boy. And that knob there is actually part of a it's a Sony Night Shot uh, attachment that I had lying around. So I just pressed it into the paper clay to make the knob. Now, if you can't find something like that, you know you could probably make these these knobs easily out of paper clay or bottle caps or something. Not metal bottle caps, you know, the plastic ones. But once that mold dried, I, I pressed more paper clay into that and got the, the shape I wanted. And I, I didn't really expect that to work as well as it did. I thought I was going to get the paper clay stuck in there, but I didn't. And I just, you know, cut away the parts that I wasn't going to use and smoothed everything out with the, the hobby knife to make a little more, you know, finished. So now it looks like the actual knob. And I made two of those. You'll see those later. And then the side of the clip, I had to add uh, a few extra pieces of foam in there. And those were, were again, uh, done the same way as all the siding was done. You know, I just, you know, matched it up on the side and cut out what I needed and glued it on. And made a few other minor adjustments and stuck a couple of pieces on the bottom sides of the clip so it would look a little bit better because you could see the cut marks from the hobby knife. You know, and it just looks better that, that way because it's a little more smoother. And then, you know, showing like a kind of like a rigid design to it. And I got some primer on there and I was going to start to paint it. But first I wanted to put in these little fins that are on the, the front of that clip. And those are coffee stirs, you know, wooden coffee stirs you can get at, you know, any local coffee shop. And I cut those to, you know, the proper length and design, you know, that I figured that looked best. So that way it kind of looks like it's just coming up out of the sides of that. And then that clip there, that's just a whole bunch of miscellaneous sized pieces of foam that I just cut out and glued together, little squares and rectangles for the part of the, the bottom part of the clip. And then I have that other piece that's below that part. I don't know, I don't know what you call it, but yeah. And then I just hot glued that on there so it would look a little bit better. And then I had this back piece, and, and I really couldn't see the the back piece of this very well in some of the you know online images of the pit boy, so I kind of made a guesstimate on what this uh, looks like. And I'll update this uh, as time goes on once we get better screenshots of the pit boy. And that knob there came from Radio Shack, so you know those are pretty easy to find. And then you can probably find something else around the house that would work for that. And there's one of my makeshift. Uh, you know, custom-made knobs. I'm putting on the other one. And those are pressing real nice. You know, I like to see uh, and attach those using dowel rods. And I use these little gemstones for the lights that are on the top and side. They work really well. I used these on my previous Pip Boy on the Pip Boy 3000, and they seem to work really well. I mean, I could have done done LEDs, but I really didn't want to take the time to do it. And plus, this works just as good. So, 
And then and there's the radio tube. So the radio tube is going to go on the side. You know, I don't know if it's really a radio tube or not. You know, I, I've seen completely, you know, enclosed radio tubes before like that, but they haven't been white. And anyway, this is a part of that piece that goes on the back of the, the radio tube thing there. And yeah, this this part what I thought was the most uh, pain because of the fact that I kept uh, uh, burning myself on the hot glue trying to get that all together. And I just put some paper towel inside to give it some structure, glued it together. And I had to put a pretty good amount of hot glue on that and glue it into the side right behind the radio tube and paint it. It's like one of the last parts that needed to be done. And well, the last part's the, the wire, and I'll show you how I did that. It's real simple. So that's just a piece of extra electronic cord I had flying around. I cut the ends off and then hot glued it to the radio tube and then hot glued it into the back piece of whatever the heck that's supposed to be on the, the pit boy. And then, you know, there you have it. You have a finished pit boy that your phone will fit into. Well, oh, uh, not quite. I had to, you know, almost forgot the caution stripes on the back. So that that's pretty much the last part, you know, and there you go. There you have it here. Finished Pip Boy. So have fun if you decide to make it.